Hi everyone and welcome to a new Mega Drive Genesis development lesson. In a previous lesson I've already taught you how to display backgrounds on the Mega Drive but those backgrounds using the method I taught you there were limited to 512 pixels horizontally and 256 pixels vertically. While those smaller kind of backgrounds are okay for some certain types of games, for other games, especially for these big platform games such as Sonic the Hedgehog here, we're really going to need a different solution so that we can display a much larger map field for the player to play on. The Green Hill Zone map I'm using here has been slightly simplified in terms of colours and I've done that because the original seemed to use more than one palette for the foreground especially to display the flowers and so on and we're going to study how to use more than one palette within a level map in a future lesson but for this particular lesson I've simplified it just to 16 colours you might notice some missing detail on the flowers here but apart from that it looks fine it looks very close to the original. If you're wondering how the Mega Drive can display such a large map, if you look closely at the individual tiles, you can probably see what's going on. Obviously, there's lots of repeated patterns. So actually, VRAM only has to uh, has to store one example of each tile, and then it can simply uh, copy that tile and paste it wherever it needs to be wherever it needs to be paced. I think Sonic does a really good job of of almost hiding this fact. It looks very organic. It doesn't look as repetitive as some games even especially with the the foliage and the trees and so on but it's a really great example of how you can make a, a level look very naturalistic while using only a few tiles okay let's get on to coding so first we'll open the uh, template project and simply delete those uh, superfluous couple of lines because we're not going to need to split display any text here and we're going to import the first step is going to import our graphic into the game so you can download that from the link below in the video description and you can see we've got that uh, sonic green hill map that i displayed before make sure that you put that file under the res folder and also under the res folder we're gonna have to create a resources.res file as we do with the other projects Remember that just because we already transferred the file to the res folder doesn't mean it's actually in the game yet or on the ROM. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to import the resources. So first of all, write tile set in uppercase letters. And then we're going to give our tile set a name. So you can call it our tile set. And then we're going to tell it what uh, file to use. So we're going to just put the file we just um, you just downloaded and just import it into the res folder. And don't forget the PNG and the compression should be best. So you want the best compression and simply write all. And the next step is to create a map resource. So we're going to do map in uppercase, uh, call it wherever you want. Looks like our tail set. This time we're going to put our level map, but you can choose your own name. Again, we're going to use that same file and don't forget the PNG at the end. Now every map resource we create is associated with a tile set so we're going to have to tell it which tile set we want it to use and of course since we just created the our tile set we're going to use that tile set so please write it there. And next just like last time choose the best compression and then simply write zero. I'm going to explain how the tile maps work in more detail later but for now simply control s to save and then compile our project and I just realized I didn't open the terminal so if you have a look at that then the the it's already compiled now so the resource should be loaded although those resources have been loaded onto the rom the uh, main.c file can't actually see those resources yet so in order for it to do so we need to add a new include to include that file we did the exact same thing in the other lesson so hopefully this process is a bit more familiar to you now if we now save and compile again, if we then try to um, use those resources in our main.c, it should finally recognize it and it'll come up in the IntelliSense of the Visual Studio Code program. Okay, with that out of the way, we can now begin to code in our main.c file. To begin with, we're going to have to write a couple of things just before where it says int main. The first one is going to be u16 int equals tile user index. Remember before in previous lessons we just did as this tile underscore user index but since we updated the SCDK 1.8 we need to do tile underscore user underscore index. For those of you who watched the lesson on how to put a sprite on the screen you might remember we did this uh, line of code here we had to write sprite and asterisk. We're going to do something similar here instead we're going to write map asterisk then a space and then simply you're going to give the level map a name so i'm um, here i'm going to call it level underscore one underscore map uh, you can call it wherever you like and of course don't forget the semicolon as usual 
With those two little things set up, we can now go into the main part of main.c and we can upload the tile set and also display the map. Okay, so let's get the tile set uploaded into the VRAM first of all. And to do that, we're going to use a function called VDP underscore load tile set. As soon as we open the brackets, it gives us a little explanation here saying, if you look at the very bottom sentence, it tells you what the function does. In this case, it's load the tile data pattern into VRAM, which is exactly what we want. And of course, you can see at the top there, that it takes three pieces of information. We need to give the, the function three pieces of information to, in order for it to do its job. The first piece of information it needs, it says it needs a pointer to the tile set structure. Now, don't worry what a pointer means right now. Uh, all we need to do is we select the our tile set that we set up before. And don't forget the ampersand or the and signal before that. So have the and signal, then our tile set like we set up in the resources.res folder. So we're just telling it what tile set we're going to be using. And the second one is the says a U16 index, the index where to start the tile load uh, data load to load the tiles from. And we're simply going to call this int that we created before, which is pointing towards the, you know, it's equal to the tile user index, and that'll be fine. And the final one is the transfer method. And this doesn't matter too much now. We can simply, simply select DMA for direct memory access. With the tile set loaded into VRAM, we can now go ahead and actually display the map on the screen. Again, this particular line of code will look quite similar to what we did when we added a sprite onto the screen in a previous lesson. What we need to do is to take the name that we gave our map, so level one map, and we need to paste it here. And then we're going to make it equal to, and now we're going to use a function, which is map underscore create. Just like the previous function, this one also takes three pieces of information. And the explanation at the bottom, you can see it says create and return a map structure required for use in all map um, functions. So uh, we're going to create this uh, map for our level and then we can manipulate it in different ways. For example, scrolling it and so on. The first piece of information it's asking for is the map was called the map definition. So this is just what we called our map when we um, added it into the resources.res. And if you recall, it will be the our level map. And don't forget the the and symbol before, just like we did with the tile set. After putting a comma, we next have to tell the function which um, layer, which background layer we want to display the map on. Now, as you know, the Mega Drive has two background layers. BG underscore A refers to the foreground and BG underscore B refers to the far background. Now, normally when a big map like this, we would use it as the foreground, but since we're only going to be displaying one uh, map today, we're just going to do it as the, the, the background, so BG underscore B. And the next one, we have to do the tile at triple. We, we've come across this before in previous lessons. If you open up the brackets, it's going to ask for more information. PAL refers to the uh, palette we're going to use, and let's put this as PAL0 since we're putting this on the far background, so we can use full 16 colors. Uh, the next one will be the priority, whether you know, it appears, normally the far background will appear you know, behind everything else, but we can change that if we want. It's not actually very useful to change it for the whole entire uh, background layer. It's normally better if you can do it on a tile by tile basis, but thankfully Yuri Nevi 16 tile tool allows us to do that. So we will study that in the future for sure. For now put false because it's not useful to put it as true at the moment. And where it comes to flip V, flip H, remember this means whether to flip the individual tiles horizontally or, or vertically. We don't really need to do that. And for the final one index, just simply tell it where I can find the tile data and it begins at what we defined before as IND. And then of course, don't forget the final brackets and also the semicolon. The final thing we need to do until we can compile the ROM again and see if everything is working okay, is to set the palette. So we've already told the Mega Drive via the map create function, uh, which palette to use with the um, with the map. And we've told it to use the PAL0, the first palette, but we haven't told it what that palette contains, what colors it contains. We need to upload the colors into that palette first. To do that, we're going to use a function we've used in previous lessons. We're going to use the pal underscore set palette function. You generally have to be very careful of where you are at which lines of code have to be in a certain order. For this pal set palette, actually we could put it before we, we load the tile set or we could put it afterwards. So it doesn't really matter. In this case, we'll just we just put the function after the loading the tile set and after the map create. It doesn't matter in this particular instance. 
And just like with the other functions, as soon as we open a bracket, it's going to tell us what piece of information we need. First, we have to tell it what palette we're going to use, PAL0 in this case. And the next one is going to say, it's going to ask for the source of the palette. So um, now this one's a bit different from what we did before when we did the image and the sprite. So with the image, we could do something like this. We could do our level map dot palette and then a hyphen, then an arrow, then data. And this could extract the palette information from, from that particular image. Now we used to be able to do this with the large maps too before the recent update to SGDK 1.8, but now we can't do that anymore. So it's the, the function that particular function has been taken away. So we have to take a different method. We have to do something else now. We're going to be using palettes in lots of different ways in the future where I teach how to, you know, fade in and out palettes and so on. But for now, we're going to use this method. Go back to resources.res, create a new resource called palettes or in uppercase letters. Uh, call the palette wherever you want. I'm going to call it our underscore palette here. And we're simply going to take that information from the palette from the file we uploaded. So from the, the level, from the map file, from the big level file. So again, large green hill map .png. And we don't need to add anything else on the end. That's fine. Don't forget to save the resources.res file before your exit. Let's save main.c and also compile just so that new palette resources shows up in our main.c. And I've just commented out the line 12, the palette, because we didn't finish off that function if we left it uh, uncommented out then it will have produced an error so that's been uh, compiled now it's all fine we can uncomment it out and now we can carry on with uh, completing this function so instead of actually taking the palette information directly from the the image file itself we created this uh, palette resource and we're going to take the information from there so remember we called that palette resource our underscore palette simply put dot data and then a comma because that will be enough and then we can move on to the final one the transfer method as usual just put this as dma direct memory access and that should be fine so go ahead and save main.c again and before we actually compile the code because everything should be ready now this is a very quick recap of what we've done firstly we had to create some resources for to put onto the rom and we did that in the resources.res uh, file we did the we uploaded the tile set then we told it what map we're going to use and lastly we also created a palette resource too to say uh, what palette we're going to be using now i'm sure you've noticed that we actually didn't have a separate file for the tile set and for the map we actually just used this same file that i'm showing you here this um big map of the green hill zone so let me just explain what's going on so if we feed the tile set resource this kind of file what it's going to do is going to go from left to right top to top to bottom and it's going to search for the individual tiles and it's going to create a tile set for us so the first tile will be this uh this empty blue and then it will try and find the next tile which will be one of the the leaves here and then you know once it meets another tile you'll check okay has this tile been put into the tile set or not yet and if it's a duplicate of tile then you won't add it to the tile set obviously it's been flipped and so on so it's going to run through the whole image it's very clever how it works and it's going to create a tile set from the the big map image we we feed it so it's going to create its own tile set so we don't have to do it now when we use the 16 tile tool we are actually going to create our own tile set and we're going to use that with individual um, unique tiles and we're going to use that to create a map so the files will be different but in this case we can just use a sprite to create the the big map and then we can feed that map into the tile set resource and it will just create a tile so SGDK will create a nice little uh, small tile set out of that map for us I will be doing a lesson soon on how to create a large level map in, in a sprite and also in 16 tiles. So if you don't understand that little explanation, don't worry. I'm sure everything will become clear in the future. Briefly going back and looking to main.c, so we had to include resources.h just to make sure the resources.res folder was included. We just defined uh, ind and we made it equal to tile user index just so that when we uploaded the, the tiles into freeram, the tile set, we could tell it where to start loading the tiles. And next we define the map itself, just like we did with the sprite when we did that lesson. And then in main, we just loaded the tile set then we actually created the map in, in the game so we so it could be displayed. And then finally, we set the palettes of PAL0 to the colors of our map that we uploaded before. Before you compile, make sure that everything is correct, that all the commas are in the right place. You've got the semicolons, everything's in the right order and saved. And then finally, we can do compile and run. And the result we get is this uh, blue <laughs> nothingness. So I don't know if you can work out what's going on here. Why are we just seeing blue instead of the, the green hill map? Don't worry, there's been no mistake in the code. Everything's working as it should. But remember, we're actually dealing with a very big map here. So 
if we and when we when we display the map when we create the map it starts from the top left hand corner from the the zero zero coordinates so from the left hand corner we need to go down 224 pixels for the vertical resolution of the screen and we have to go to the right 320 pixels and that's what will be being displayed on the screen here and as you can see uh, what's being displayed is just the sky only so what we need to do if we need to actually see some some trees and some the the lush scenery and and, and foliage that the green hill sky uh, green hill zone is very famous for is to scroll the map so we're going to need to scroll it down so how much we need to scroll it down we need to look at the map and find the the y coordinates at the very top from where we're going to start to display the screen and if you just do just above maybe the tree line and then go down 224, we should get an idea of where we have to scroll the, the Y coordinates in order to be able to see the, the trees in the ground and so on. If I move the cursor to where we want the, the background to be, be scrolled to on the, on the Y axis and then look in the bottom left hand corner of A sprite, it will tell you the coordinates, which looks like being a 768. So if we scroll to 768, on the vertical axis then we should be able to see the trees on our screen in order to scroll the map we're going to use another function this one's called map underscore scroll to this takes three pieces of information it's going to ask you which of the maps you want to scroll because sometimes you might have two maps at the same time this time we've only got one and it's going to ask you where the x coordinates you want to scroll it to and also the y coordinates as well the map we want to scroll is the one we created before the above the level one map so we're going to write that there. Um, the x-axis, we don't want to scroll it in the x-axis, but we do want to scroll in the y-axis to uh, position 768 as we uh, worked out before looking at the, the one in A sprite. So if I just save now and compile and run, hopefully we're going to see some trees. I think you'll agree that that's much more interesting. We finally get to see the trees and the flowers and the, the grass and the, the famous checkerboard uh, pattern that Green Hill is so famous for. And since we're already on the topic of using the map scroll to function, let's just do it so we can actually scroll constantly the, the, the map to the right. And just like when we did the scrolling with the uh, the other backgrounds we did in the previous lesson, first step will be to create a variable. We're going to call it X. And we're going to replace the zero, the x coordinates in the map scroll to function with that variable. And the importance of creating a variable is that we can change it on a cycle by cycle basis. So that x is going to increase, and as it increases, the the actual map will scroll to the right hand side. And if we're going to be changing the variable and the scrolling on a, a cycle by cycle basis, obviously it has to be done on in the while loop. So just to remind everyone that when we're doing uh, these programs, the anything before main is normally where we define the variables. Anything within the, the main section here that I'm highlighting is where we load the maps and so on. Something that's going to be done once. And anything we need to be done on a, a cycle by cycle basis continuously throughout the level, we're going to put into our while loop. So obviously map scroll to the second one needs to be put into our while loop so that it keeps updating every single cycle, 60 frames per second. And of course, we're going to need to increase increment that um, the x we're going to use the coordinates the x coordinates so if we add one the x coordinates going to increase by one each each cycle so it'll, it'll be replaced it'll be scrolling to the right constantly so if we just save and compile here hopefully we see some scrolling and there we go so everything seems to be working fine the scrolling always looks a bit jerky in the Gens emulator, but if you use it on your Mega Drive, it should look nice and smooth. Uh, if we just compare it to the the original map that we created in A Sprite, it, it looks like it's it's fine. It's it's all working. There's no tile corruption or anything. It'll just continue to cycle through all the way to the end of the map. So uh, obviously for these kind of big maps, normally you don't want an auto scrolling level, although that's an option. Most of the time you're going to want to create a camera that follows the character around, and we're definitely going to cover that in a future lesson. That's quite a big topic. There's lots of functions we're going to create ourselves so the camera follows the the player. But but obviously it's an essential thing that we need to learn. For the next lesson, however, I'm going to be covering a topic that many people have requested, and that's how to take assets, graphical assets from different games, for example, from a Super Nintendo game, and, and to alter it and to change it and to import it into the Mega, uh, Mega Drive game instead. So stay tuned for that, and that's what we'll be covering next time. Okay, so I think that just about wraps things up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then please subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. 
And if you want to support the channel further, I have a Patreon account. You won't go unrewarded. And until next time, farewell.